we sometimes struggle as urban designers to stand by our sort of principles about what makes a good quality place. I think we feel we have to justify um, a sort of normative set of principles um, about what is quality, um, what a good quality place means. But actually, I think it's quite simple. Uh, I think it's places that uh, are active, uh, joyous, um, and enjoyable for people to, to be in, to, to, to enjoy being in space. Um, and I think that tends to mean that there's a mix of uses, um, that places are of a, of a density that allows different uses to interact with one another, um, that ground floors are active, um, that there's space for commerce, um, but, there's all, but, the, the, but that places also have sufficient green and public space for, for everyone in society to use in all the different ways that different and diverse groups of people choose to use space, whether that's for quiet reflection, for being loud and busy and noisy um, in the morning, in the middle of the day, but also in the evening. Uh, and, and these spaces, in answer to your second question, are sometimes hard, quite hard for us to produce. Um, we struggle with um, a development sector that looks to, you know, profit from new development, which often means that they're looking to cut corners or create places that, 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 that fit their particular business model. Um, I think sometimes we struggle with strategy for place, you know, how to actually create that vibrancy and complexity in the, in the new places we create. Um, and, that, and that's a challenge of bringing together the different actors and agencies that ultimately create space. And certainly in the UK, we have a challenge with, with skills. How do we get and help nurture uh, the types of uh, urban designers, urbanists, um, who, who were able not only to be involved in the design process and the creative design process, but also can be negotiators and, um, and, and almost politicians in a way um, to, to create the types of relationships and change mindsets about how things are done to, to deliver um, a, a plan or a strategy for a place. That's the big question. I think a lot of local governments um, don't necessarily have a sophisticated vision of quality in place and how to deliver that quality. I think we get generic statements and a lot of planning policy around you know, creating a sustainable, well-designed place. But then we don't necessarily have the tools, whether they be informal tools or formal regulatory mechanisms, to necessarily always deliver on those ambitions. So I think the first thing we need to do is ensure that there's an opportunity for the people that live in a, in a place or a city to come together to work with experts, architects, landscape architects, planners, urban designers, to formulate a vision, a shared vision of place um, at which place could be at its heart. And some of that's an education process for experts to sort of um, listen to what local people are interested in seeing but for experts too to share examples of how that might that vision might be achieved, and I think if if there if that if that sort of critical mass emerges, you know, and, and, and we see it in some cities around the world, places like Barcelona, uh, perhaps Vancouver in Canada, when you've got that in place, a vision and, and a strong idea, you've got a lot more chance to make the tools that sit below that effective. People that are well funded and politically well supported in the formal bureaucracies. So an example might be a city architect's office or um, a mayor's design team um, that have, that, that where, where an investment is made in human resources and people who are there in government to deliver a design agenda. So that's the first thing. And then they need mechanisms that they may well produce to help deliver that. So a design review panel that requires 
um, big development projects that are going to change the face of the city to come forward for critique um, and expert analysis. Um, design strategies where the local authority, the public authority, develops sophisticated design strategies within which private developers have to, have to operate. I think these types of things are, 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 the, are the key mechanisms, but without the people, the skills around them, and the buy-in from politicians, it can be easy for developers to look, look for ways to avoid having to meet some of the, the high quality outcomes. Because ultimately, good design can't always be done on the cheap. You know, there does have to be a financial investment, an extra bit of outlay to achieve some of the goals um, that the, and, and to raise the general level of quality, um, which, which might ultimately have some impact on profit margins of the people that are ultimately creating new buildings. I guess I mention the formal mechanisms because so often they don't work very well. Mm -hmm. And I think the softer apparatus are, are very much about the, the human relationships, the, the building of coalitions, um, the ability of, of experts to communicate the value of some of the policies and plans that are put in place. You know, using uh, design competitions, for example, to, to deliver new public spaces or particular public buildings, and then that becoming um, a sort of physical expression of a city's ambition. So that that might then filter down to the more general everyday decisions that are made about a new housing development or a new office building. And, and you say, well, you know, look, look, we've got these moments of quality, these places of, of, of particular uh, um, special um, quality you know, that's, that's what we're aiming for. You know, every building has to be a star architect design place, but we're looking for a, for a level of quality that goes above the mundane. I think it is foremost a public, um, a public sector's responsibility. Why? Because ultimately they are the re regulatory body that grants permission for new development. And they are also the regulatory or statutory agency that writes the plans that sets up the framework. So ultimately the responsibility lies with the public authority. But the onus is, is on the political masters, the, 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 uh, the, perhaps the mayor or the local elected officials to, um, to, uh, to, uh, to want to adopt a city building um, approach to public policy in their, in their manifesto, wider manifesto for the city. Uh, I think it's very difficult for civil servants um, to deliver um, a design-led planning agenda without the support um, of elected officials. And ultimately elected officials uh, arrive in local government because they are elected by, um, by, the, by the populace, by the, by the citizens of, of a place. So um, if, if local communities want to see change and quality of space and they then elect politicians who embody that agenda, that agenda is then more likely to, to be something that um, planners can deliver. And I think if you've got that political support, the chances are you've got architects and planners working local government who, as for their careers and, 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 and their interest in working in local government, already want to deliver better quality places but also often don't have the um, capital, the political capital, um, and the power to do that. Um, so if they, if they get that support from, from politicians, I think that becomes uh, so much easier. It's about trying to build coalitions with the private sector. Um, it's about public agencies going out to some of the big developers they know work in their area and talking to them about place quality, um, perhaps um, identifying examples of development that's occurred in other cities and places using best practices to show what can be, can be achieved. Um, that job, I think, is more difficult without political buy-in. Um, I think developers are savvy, um, savvy actors. 
um, they're entrepreneurial um, and they know um, they know they can behave differently in different locations, different cities, depending on the level of control and ambition in terms of a place agenda. And if they know that it's possible to to deliver a plate to deliver a building that might cost them less money, they're they're likely to 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 go with that option. Unfortunately, um, so partly it's about a culture change in real estate development. Wouldn't it be great if more real estate developers were, were place makers? You know, that, that, that people went into real estate, perhaps from architecture or planning, um, from professions that, where, where it was all about wanting to create exciting places. And we have examples of developers um, that, that do want to do that. Unfortunately, there's lots of other developers where, where that's not their primary focus. And I think we're increasingly seeing in our cities grassroots groups of citizens looking for ways to take ownership over public spaces in their neighbourhood. It tends to be a more neighbourhood-focused activity, but that's no bad thing. In the UK, what we've seen post-austerity, um, post the financial crisis, is um, a crisis in funding in local government. And so at the local level, citizens are seeing um, parks that are poorly maintained, litter that's not collected on the streets, um, and they're beginning to take that kind of local action to take ownership of their places. So we're seeing, for example, um, local groups looking to um, undertake community gardening projects, um, community street uh, projects, more informal, tactile, urbanist types projects, local businesses, um, creating spaces in, in, on, on streets for outdoor eating and outdoor uh, coffee drinking or, or what have you. Um, communities taking over vacant buildings for community projects. Um, I think this is where um, community can really begin to start shaping agendas and then that perhaps is a way to encourage change um, at, a, at a high level. I, I certainly in Scotland one of the um, one of the things that, that's happened has been the emergence of a tool called the Place Standard, um, which is a, um, a freely available toolkit that the central government in Scotland have produced, along with Architecture and Design Scotland, who are the national advocate for design, and the NHS, interestingly, who have moved more and more, the National Health Service, who have more and more taken an interest in um, urban design because they see it as creating more healthy places and the more healthy places are, the less likely people are going to need to use the um, services of, of, of the NHS because the more preventative work you do, the healthier citizenry we have. So that's very exciting. Um, and the place standard is a tool that allows communities to come together in any way they wish and to assess and evaluate um, the, the quality of the environment they live in um, and to use that perhaps as a tool to connect um, and engage with the more formal structures of local government to pressure and, and, um, and, and, and demand sometimes a change in the way decisions are made. This is actually a tool that's been used a lot in other places, but it's quite new in, in, in the Scottish context. There's been the growing interest in design review panels. Um, they are a somewhat formal um, uh, part of the design governance framework, but they're also volunteer, so they address this challenge we have with austerity and the underfunding of skills in local government, and, and they bring in volunteer experts often um, to join a panel and to comment on major planning applications. This is something that's quite new in lots of local authorities, so it's being experimented with. Um, it's been established in the big cities for a while, obviously, um, but, but less so in smaller places. And, and I think design in outcomes in smaller cities is something we sometimes overlook as urban designers. We're often attracted to the big cities, the exciting cosmopolitan places. But a lot of development happens in quieter places, smaller places. And a lot of the development that happens there is often of some of the lower quality um, and encouraging change in those places. And perhaps experts coming from big cities to give support in those smaller cities can be a really valuable um, 
asset um, in the placemaking process. I think we should absolutely always be looking elsewhere and challenging our local approaches to things. I think we should always look at being critical about what we're doing and questioning, um, questioning our practices. I think we should also look to identify and celebrate things we've done well and be excited about sharing that with other places. So yes, I think networks are, are increasingly important. I think they um, provide opportunities to get out of the sort of tunnel vision of the local experience and try and unpack the black box of decision making and, and to try and innovate and, and, and change. I think the key thing though is to look for examples and precedents from places that are at least somewhat comparable with the place that you are in. To avoid making mistakes or trying to be over ambitious or try something that really isn't going to work. So it's no good, for example, I don't think, for a, a, say a smaller post-industrial city to look necessarily to London, a big global capital, for examples of how to produce new places. You know, so a city like where I'm from, Glasgow, a post-industrial city, might be better off sharing, uh, sharing experiences with a city, say, like Bilbao or Marseille or perhaps Pittsburgh in the United States, other cities that experience post-industrialism and to understand their experiences. And for perhaps places like London to be sharing its knowledge with Paris or New York, places of a similar, a similar size. So context matters, um, size matters, um, and, and, and I think there's lots to be learned, but they must be in the understanding that the cultural context for how decisions are made and the political context are always very different. So that learning can only go so far, and that learning should never be about trying to replicate something that's being produced elsewhere, but to learn from it and to, to change and reflect on it for what works um, in the place that you are from.